In the studio also with me is Anita Budu, who is country director of the International Justice Mission, uh, to help us also appreciate really matters from their uh, point of view. Um, hello, um, welcome to uh, Point Blank. Good evening, Salom, and thank you very much um, for the opportunity to speak into this issue this evening. Very well. It's a, it's a pleasure. So so we, we saw this report, um, and we were, I mean, some were happy that indeed children were being rescued from the claws of child trafficking, etc., only to see another side of the, the, the activities you carried out, that indeed some of these children were not even trafficked after all. They were not even in child labor. They were happily living with their relatives. You know, how did you receive the BBC Africa Eyes report? Um, we received the BBC Africa Eye Re report and looked at it in detail. Mm. Um, and looking at it, we didn't just review, of course, many of the revelations in there um, are quite shocking. Mm. Um, to us, what we did when we received the initial report was to do an internal inquiry and investigation into the case. Mm. And what we find from our side is that there are a lot of inaccuracies um, and misportrayals of iGEM's work within this documentary. Mm. Um, if I was to back up a bit, there was a lot of references to iGEM operation, iGEM rescue, IGM did that. That is the first thing I would point out as an inaccuracy. Mm. Um, in Ghana, IGM is an NGO and there is a, a mandate, an NGO's mandate is restricted. There is only, there is a set by law what we can and cannot do. Mm. IGM's mandate in Ghana is to provide support to public justice systems to be able to be strengthened and provide justice solutions and support to every vulnerable child in Ghana. Mm. And so whether it's the most remote village um, in the country or whether it's in Accra, I believe that every child should have that access to support services. Every child should not be subject to abuse and exploitation. Mm. Now, when we come to the issue of trafficking on the lake, it is not a simple issue. It is not a clear-cut issue. Mm. And so, again, something that I have head um is that it's a cultural thing um we as children children learn the trade of their parents and mm. yes that is true many of us as children worked and helped and supported our parents many children um before school may go to their farm after school would help their parents these are not the cases we are talking about mm. we are talking about a spectrum from where within child labor and hazardous labor a child's health is being compromised, their development is being compromised, their morals are being compromised. And on the other spectrum, when you go far down to trafficking, these are the most vulnerable group because they have been taken from one place to another for the specific purpose of exploitation. Hmm. And I have directly heard stories from these children. They are told that your role, your job in life, is to work for me. Mm. And so quite often these fishermen also have their own children who they do take care of. And um, these traffic children are treated to me, not like human beings and not like children. Mm. And so the most heartbreaking story I have seen and heard is a child where upon rescue was giving food on a table and all the other children were eaten. And I saw him go to the bin and pick up food. And so I left the food, left the food on the table. He didn't. To, he did not touch it. He did went not to even. Pick from look, the bin, he rather. went to pick from the bin. Mm. The leftover, the bones that others had eaten, and it was in the but, bin. But, but that, that should be an isolated case, and because the, the, one of the cases in point, the the case of Fatima. Fatima appeared quite very happy with uh, with where she was living, with the grandmother, grandfather, etc. Yes. Before she was she was taken in the manner that the Africa I described. Yes. Two two things. This was a person quite happy with with life generally before she was taken away in that manner. Mm -hmm. And is, is that the way you encourage, you know, the rescue mission or the rescue to, to, to take place? I mean, storming the place, gunpoint, whisking the people away, no explanation to the people, the relatives, etc. Is, is that a practice? Not at all. That is not the practice. Before IJM embarks on any intervention or mm. provides information to the government authorities, there are weeks and weeks of gathering information. So many a time it's um, someone who alerts or 
a member of the committee who says, I've seen this, I'm concerned about mm. it. And so there are weeks of investigation and going into detail and lots of back and forth. Mm. Back and forth happened, that's happened within the team because you don't just take one person's word from it. We have um, professionals from different expertise or different fields to discuss these cases and see the merits. From the program, um, you would see that there was within this particular hilltop case, there was one that there was clear evidence pointing to a case of trafficking. Mm. And the other three, it was not so clear. Mm. It was very, and this is where I say that you have trafficking, you have exploitation, you have hazardous labor. And sometimes with the information that you have, it's very difficult to determine that. We sent that information to the police and the, it was outlined. The facts of the case were outlined. The but, details but the, the information of the case is you were outlined. aware that these three were not actually trafficked. But I mean, the, the claim is that you painted a picture as if they they, they were trafficked children or they they, they were persons which well they were persons who uh, uh, who who were within the, the the kind of people you you were targeting or you 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 wanted. So even in spite of information pointing to the fact that no. These guys did not fit the bill. You still went ahead and then suggested same to the authorities and then they went to in, do what they did. In the initial information that was gathered, it mm. was not clear. It was not clear cut. And so when presented to the authorities, a decision was made to intervene. Normally when there's an intervention, in many cases, in other crimes, um, there's an intervention and there are interviews, there are assessments done and then a decision made in terms of proceeding. Mm. But, but subsequently... So it, was a com it was a complex case. Mm. There, were, there was a need for assessment mm. and so that intervention was done and the when the intervention was done and the interviews were done, both the police government agencies, police and DSW, determined that at that point there was a need for their children to be out of that situation and the ch charges were brought um, to the suspects. Again, IJM can't come and say this is what should be done. Our role is to provide support and mm. equip and guidance. Uh, yeah, so provide so, so, so will, I, will IJM, IJM know the mode or how they the rescue or they get to these kids. Uh, you know, the, the case of Mojina still, uh, yes. um, um, I mean, uh, when I read it, I, it's, I, it's, I was I, yes. very, very concerning. Yes. So, so does IGM know how these raids, I mean, for lack of a better word, are carried out? You know, because if, if indeed how they described it was how it really happened, is this something the IGM, IGM would be worried about? When we completed our inquiries, the description of the team on the ground is not the description that we are getting from the um, narration or for the, from the documentary. Mm. You spoke to the grandmother of the girl and the, the, the uncles and all those people who were around who, who purportedly saw what happened. Did you speak to them in, in, your, in your interviews later? We did not speak to those community members. We spoke to members of staff who had been on the ground. So that dawn, where the raid occurred, I mean, the, your staff were part of the police people who went there. Is that the case? The our staff were supporting the police, mm. and the actual intervention, the police made the intervention. However, we did not observe where. When a police has to intervene in a situation, they assess mm. and they determine how many people need to be in. Normally, in doing a trauma-informed approach, any um, officer who will be dealing with a child will not be in uniform to, 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 to give a more trauma-informed approach so mm. that the child is not um, distressed. Mm. But, um, but I, the I'm police just, will I, determine mm. um, how to go in. Sometimes, and, and from our observation, the police use a measured approach. Our observation in this particular case was that there was explanation as to what was going on and there was a measured approach. We did not observe mm. this situation of the gun. We did not observe but, but that. I, I find it quite concerning um, that after this documentary had come out and you, you, you wanted to, to ascertain what the truth was, you, you did not see it necessary to talk to the grandmother who Africa I had spoken to. I, I would expect that you would have spoken to her you hear her side of the story, try to locate, where's a small community of about just a dozen people, locate the people that Africa I claim they spoke to to see if the stories will be different and maybe that could inform how you proceed next time. You know, and yes, I, I was yeah. wondering why you did not do that. Well, at this point, it could, at this point, I wouldn't deem it as appropriate mm. to go in that situation to go and speak to that grandmother. 
someone has made their account, I as an entity can't go and, and, and if I'm going to ask, it's in a sense, a sense saying, are you telling the truth? Mm. Um, I think that the as we are supporting, it would make sense for a more independent entity mm. to ask that question rather than IJM go and say, we had this. This is this thing. What is your? I I I don't think it's the most ethical thing for us to now go to the grandmother again mm. and ask those questions. To that, also, I would say that whilst we have not found wrongdoing from our team or from IGM Ghana in this particular um, case, we are an organisation that prioritises the well-being and protection of every child and safeguarding of every child. And this is what motivates us in the work that we do. This is what drives us to protection, protection of our children in Ghana. And so as we move, every operation we support, every operation we work in, there is always a review, what mm. we call an after-action review. We learn from that mm. and we implement and we always look to grow. And so from this that has come out, we always look to review our policies, mm. our safeguarding policies, and look to um, improve and grow as we go. We are a learning organization. IGM Ghana started in 2015. I started with the team as 2015. You see me as country director now. Mm. I actually started as a social worker mm. with the aftercare team. And so it's very, um, it's very close to my heart mm. because the reason I joined this team is because I have a passion for children. Mm. I'm a social worker. I have a passion for children and the children of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so it is my life mission um, to mm -hmm. ensure that there are structures in place to um, protect every child. Things are not simple. Things are not straightforward. They mm -hmm. are very complicated. Mm -hmm. um, but through it all, we work to improve and get better and also work with other organizations, other NGOs, other entities, other government bodies to together look to see what we can do to keep moving forward. Mm. And number one, outline and ensure that the whole of Ghana knows that this is a real problem. Mm. It is not something that is exaggerated. There have been many studies. And um, I really had wish, my biggest wish in all of this is that there had been discussions with survivors mm. and children who've been in these situations for two, five, ten years for them no, to there, say there, their there story. There surely are, 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 are difficult situations. There surely are children in, in these situations. I mean, yes. there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. but, but I think that the, the, the concern is sometimes these stories are exaggerated for whatever reason. And they don't they don't paint us in the, in the correct light. If the cases are the way they are stated, no problem. Mm -hmm. But to stage, uh, to, to use the word of, I mean, to, to use, uh, to, to borrow from what the Africa I says, to stage it for whatever purpose, that is what I think, yes. that's where the concern is. Yeah, so from so, my so, perspective... Yeah, just, 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 okay. just, so, for, for example, in the manner in which the Africa Eye claims they stormed the village, I don't know what other approaches are available. Given there's a small village, I don't know what resistance they anticipated. Couldn't the police or the DSW, uh, couldn't they have invited a family to the police station or to the office somewhere yes. to tell them and take the child away we from that situation. That, again, like I said, depending on the community, depending on the situation, be, depending on the intelligence and information that is received, there are different means that are used. There have been situations, yeah, going like, there, there have been at cases. At night or at have, dawn, that, that's also, that will also be traumatizing to the child you're hoping to save. To the question that I was mm. I responded, mm. there have been situations where it's been assessed and somebody has said bring the child to the dsw office and that intervention has been done and there was no issue mm. that, uh, that that was done um to the um concern about it being done at dawn again various dynamics and various variables need to be looked at when an intervention is being done mm. and the well-being of the child is also looked at within within that and so Again, you have to, a lot has to be balanced. Well-being of the child, if we're looking at a situation where someone is at significant risk of harm or there is harm being done, making an intervention at dawn where you're likely to be able to take that child out of that situation or going, let me say, in the afternoon when they've already left to go fishing and they are not there or you go into a different dynamic and it's not you're less likely to find the person. Mm. All these things have to be considered. And so the aim 
I would have to really, really emphasize is not to stage anything. So, so what, learnings, to, yeah, what learnings have we made from uh, this particular instance or situation? Africa Eye coming to say, I mean, from their investigation, that this is what they found, contrary to what you put out there. I mean, just mm-hmm. one or two learnings from this and how that will influence, you know, our future operations. I think number one and one of the learnings that I am taking on board or the organization is taking on board is coming with our government agencies and our government partners and looking really at process and procedure and what can be done to further um, improve what is already in place um, to ensure that children are protected in mm. the long term, in the bigger picture, mm. but then also through the direct interventions, these um, nuances and unique situations are looked at. This, this, this is... Yeah, this this is a unique situation, and um, but we always look to improve. Um, the other thing that um, has been highlighted that I'll just want to say is that what we are driven by is the protection of children and mm. not targets or any other things like that. Um, however, if there is even one person in the team that feels that that is the case, this is something that we'll be going through in terms of trainings mm-hmm. and internal capacity Very buildings well. to ensure that that is not the case. Very well. Thank you so much, Anita Budu. Wish you had more time to talk, but I, I really think... really do we'll, wish we'll, also. We'll, yes, we'll, 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 talk, we'll be talking more as the, the days uh, go by. Thank you so much. So we've been speaking to Anita Budu, who is Country Director for the International Justice Mission which is an NGO devoted to helping children and rescuing children in child labor and, and, and who have been trafficked.